there, welcome to the Upcycle Design Lab. My name's Cindy and I craft using recycled and repurposed materials. If you're new here, I hope you'll stick around and check out some of my other upcycling tutorials. And if you like what you see, you can check the subscribe button below any of my videos to become a subscriber. Also, if you'd like to be notified when I upload new videos, be sure to check the bell icon as well. So, if you've seen some of my recent videos, you know I've been working on a lot of projects to make over my messy craft room. And I'm getting close to the end, so this is one of my last projects. But I had this old desk, and it's got a couple of coats of paint on it, and it's pretty chipped up. So I've stripped off a little bit to see what the wood looks like, and my, my plan is to just strip off the paint off of the top and the seat of the chair probably and you can do that either using a chemical stripper or a heat gun. I've done a whole video on how to remove paint with a heat gun and you can I'll put a link to that in the comment section and there'll also be links to some of my other videos throughout this video up in the corner of, the, of this video. Uh, to be honest I was a big fan of the heat gun but for bigger projects, I have just used the uh, chemical stripper because it's just a little bit faster and it's messy. You want to follow all the precautions of wearing gloves and goggles and things, but it just is a lot faster. And I did a whole two dressers a project a few projects ago that uh, I had to strip all the paint off of. And to be honest, I'm just a little tired of stripping paint, so I didn't want to do it on this whole dress desk. So I heard about something called liquid sandpaper and uh, it allows you to paint over existing paint and finishes without having to sand or strip off all of the paint. So I've never used that before but we're going to see how that goes. So my plan is to paint the bulk of the dresser and the drawers and do a little bit of stain on the top. I'm not sure yet whether I'm going to try to make a custom colored stain or just use a natural stain or a brown stain. I'm going to kind of decide that as I go along. And then the other thing I want to do is add a little bit of decoration to the drawers. So I have some air dry clay that I'm um, going to mold into some different shapes to make some borders around the drawers. And I've done a similar uh, project. Uh, I remade a lamp a little while ago that I used this air dry clay and it was really a fun medium to work with so I'm going to try to apply that to the desk as well. So the next step is just to get the rest of this paint stripped off of the top of the dresser and the seat of the chair and then we'll proceed with the uh, liquid sandpaper and see how that works. So let's get started. So here's just another look at the desk and chair before I started. You can see that the paint is a little bit chipped up on the corners and the edges. So to clean off the top of the desk, I have some clean strip stripper, a junky old paintbrush, and then I'm going to use this to scrape the paint off. It's just a five in one, but you could use a putty knife. I've got my chemical gloves, and then I have a little piece of cardboard here that I'm going to use as sort of a, to scrape all the icky goopy stuff onto. And then for the final cleanup, um, I have the mineral spirits and some rags. So I'm using my paintbrush to spread out a fairly thick layer of the paint stripper. And it says just to go in one direction. Uh, so I'm just brushing in one direction. And then uh, once you wait about 15 minutes, you can start scraping the paint off. I haven't done a lot of stripping paint, but I have found that I have always needed a second coat of the stripper in order to get all of the paint off. And in this case, I definitely needed it because there were two coats of paint on the desk before I started. One tool I didn't mention uh, before, but that I found came in very handy was a little metal brush. So in order to clean up some of the more stubborn spots, I used a little bit of mineral spirits and the wire brush.
Once all of the paint's off, you can go back with a rag and clean it off with some mineral spirits. And you'll find probably that there's some residue left from the uh, paint stripper. So I sort of wiped that off and then I did a final cleaning with a new cloth and some more mineral spirits. So as I mentioned before, I didn't want to strip the entire desk. So I'm trying this clean strip liquid sandpaper and the instructions are pretty simple. You just shake it up, uh, you get a clean cloth, and you rub it in a circular motion um, on the surface, kind of switching out the rag pretty frequently. It says so that you don't uh, put more residue back on. Uh, to be honest, I couldn't tell the difference. I, I put it on all of the painted surfaces, but I have no idea whether it really worked. This is a, one of the drawers that I hadn't treated, Here's a shot of a drawer that I did treat. And because I was just sort of trying to do a comparison, I did sand this drawer. So you can see a very big difference. So I'm a little skeptical about this stuff, but um, I'm hopeful that it will help the paint to adhere. So to add my embellishments to the front of the desk drawers, I'm using some Crayola air dry clay. It's a very slow drying uh, air dry clay from what I've read. It's really the only air dry clay I've ever used. Um, I also have a cake, I guess it's for frosting for cakes, but I used it on the lamp project that I mentioned before. And it has some nice flower shapes in it. So I'm just using a small paintbrush to brush on a little bit of oil so that my uh, clay will release nicely from the mold. And then I'm just going to warm up the clay a little bit with my hands and press it into the mold. And I also have a small tool. Uh, it's, it's sort of a pick shape. You could probably use a small knife or anything, but you need something to kind of clean up the edges of the mold once you have the clay pressed into the mold. So I'm just going to press the clay firmly into the mold and make sure that I get it in all of the little crevices. And then I'm using my little pick tool to pull some of the excess clay out of the mold. And once you have all of the clay pulled out, you can kind of smooth it back out. And then I like to kind of push it away from the edges just to make sure that it's going to release nicely from the mold. And once you've done that, you may end up with some excess in the middle again, which you can just go back in and pull out. You want to get it as flat on the back as you can. So I'm using this biggest flower shape to make a decorative piece for the drawer pulls. And I'm just using the existing drawer pulls that I had on the dresser and some wood glue. And I'm going to just gently press the handle or knob into the clay. I don't want to displace a lot of the clay around the edges, but I do want to kind of indent the clay a little bit. And then I'm just going to pop it out. And just to make sure it stays a little more secure and I has a little better knob shape, I'm pushing the edges back around to round it out a little bit. And then I'm just going to set it aside to dry. For the drawers, I'm going to use a couple of the smaller shapes. And again, you can just oil up the mold, fill in the clay, pull out any excess, and pop the pieces right out of the mold. You probably don't need to oil it every time. I usually could get three or four pieces out before I had to put any more um, oil in the mold. For the design I've decided to make, I need four of the really small flowers and two of the little four petal flowers. And then I'm also going to be making some of the vine shapes. And they're a little bit trickier. So to do that, you want to make sure that you have them oiled nicely. And then I just took a piece of clay and kind of rolled it out. You don't want to get too much clay in the mold, but it's hard not to have a lot of overlapping clay. So I'm just kind of pressing it in the mold here and stretching it out so I don't have too much excess. And then I'll go back and I'll use my little pick tool to kind of clean off the edges. And because these are such tricky pieces to handle, I'm not going to pull them out of the mold until I'm actually ready to glue them to the drawer.
When you're using the tool to kind of pull the clay away, if you're pulling it out of the mold itself, you just are trying to take a little bit too much clay. So here I'm just trying to take little small bites of clay out at a time. And that gives me a nice clean edge. And then again, I'm gonna go back once I have all of the excess clay pulled off and I'm gonna kind of smooth the piece away from the edges of the mold just to make sure that it'll come out easily. And of course, one of the nice things about the clay is that if you do pull it out and get too much out, you can always just push it back in. And if you get too much out, you can grab a little bit of clay and, and repair the piece before you take it out of the mold. Like I said, it's very, very forgiving clay. So I'm ready to glue the pieces to my drawer and you could mark them if you wanted to. I just kind of eyeball things because I'm lazy that way, I guess. So here I'm just gently pulling out the first vine piece. And you can see in the frame that I have one drawer that already has the pieces glued to it. I'm just using it to sort of eyeball where these pieces go. So I'm going to carefully handle my piece. And I'm going to add a little bit of wood glue to the back of the piece and then I'm just going to place it on the drawer, kind of matching it with my other drawer. And I can move it around if I need to. So once I have it in place, I'm going to go and gently press it down so that all of the glue is making contact with the desk drawer. And then I can use my paintbrush just to clean up any of the glue that has pushed out underneath. So here I'm going to go ahead and match up my other vine piece and continue applying my design to the desk drawer. When I first started working with this clay, I was afraid to touch it because I just thought I was going to mess up the mold shape every if I, if I put my fingers on it, but it's actually pretty sturdy. You can handle it. These skinny pieces, I did break a couple, but um, it's, I didn't really want to redo them because I wasn't sure I wasn't going to break them again. So I did just kind of push them back together. And in a minute, I'll show you how I went back and filled in some of the cracks and holes that you can end up with when you are working with this clay. Once the clay and the glue are dry, which takes about 24 hours if the pieces of clay are a decent size, um, I'm going back with some primer paint and I'm just working gently the paint into all the crevices of my design and coating the front of the drawer. Once the primer coats dry, you can go back and see that there are a couple places where the clay didn't quite touch the drawer uh, surface itself. So you can't really paint there, it just sort of leaves a little bit of a hole. So in order to fill those gaps in, I'm using a little combination of Plaster of Paris water and Elmer's white glue. And you can see it's fairly runny consistency. You can make it as thick as you want to with, you can thicken it up with the glue or you can thicken it up with the plaster of Paris if you have a bigger hole. Um, I'm using about a third, a third, a third here, I think, as far as my recipe, but you could certainly make it thicker if you wanted to. But I'm just brushing it on to cover those holes that are, that I'm gonna wanna be able to paint over when I do my top coat. And this mixture is also good if you have any cracks in some of your pieces, you can fill in those cracks with this as well. All right, getting back to the desk itself. It was out in the garage and I was kind of avoiding it because it got cold for a couple of days, but here it is with the primer coat and then a coat of light pink. For the wood finish, I decided to make my own stain color. So I'm starting with some natural stain, which is basically clear. I have a cup to mix my colors in, some oil-based paints that I'm gonna use to mix my color. And I just use a plastic fork to, uh, to do the mixing. I have a little piece of wood to test my colors on and then my paintbrush. So there's no exact science when you're making your own uh, stain colors. You do want to start with the natural uh, stain because it's a clear, it's basically a clear coat finish. 
And I usually start with about a quarter cup of stain because you really don't need very much stain unless you're doing a really big project. So here I'm uh, putting some brown and a little bit of black into the stain because I want a fairly dark stain color. And the only thing I'll say about this is you have to mix it really, really well. It takes kind of a long time to get the paint mixed into the stain the first time around. Once you have it mixed in uh, the first time, you want to kind of stir it occasionally, but it does take some vigorous mixing. My first test didn't turn out as dark as I wanted it to, so I added more black paint and I was much happier with that color. So as I started to stain my desktop, I realized it probably would have been smarter to do the staining before the painting, just in case any of the stain drips down onto the paint. But um, since I wasn't sure whether I wanted to go with a darker or lighter color initially until I had some of my paint colors on there, um, I was stuck doing it after I'd painted. So I wouldn't recommend doing it in this order, but if you do, just be extra careful not to drip the stain onto the areas that you've painted. So the next step was to add some accent colors and I just mixed some different colors of pink to make sort of an ombre effect for the desk and the matching drawer pulls. The final step is to seal the stain and the paint and to do that I'm just using some Minwax Clear Coat Polycrylic. I have a high gloss finish. If you don't want glossy you could certainly get more of a matte finish and I'm just putting it on all of the surfaces. For the desktop and the drawer pulls I decided to add a second coat just because those are going to be places that are going to get more wear and tear. You can see that this clear coat is pretty thin, so you want to make sure that you're not getting too much on and you want to spread it nice and evenly and also clean up any of the drips with a small paintbrush. So that's it for today's project. I'm not usually a pink person and my desk turned out very girly, but I kind of like it. Um, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up and be sure to check out some of my other upcycling tutorials in this craft room makeover series. Thanks so much. Hope to see you soon.